Part four of the cue ball liquidation. As you all know, my friend cue ball sent me, and that, this is for you guys that watch all my videos sequentially. My friend cue ball sent a whole bunch of mobile boxes up here in this giant ass box. Well, after about six days of tripping over this thing, cause I'm completely out of space here, I'm pissed at it. F you giant box. Okay, I'm pissed at it, so I am getting rid of all the amps that were in it for him. This is the last portion, the last segment, the last stop on the choo-choo train of life for this series. Okay, enough. In here, smells like X-Force. Smells like an old school Arland X-Force, but it has a little bit of BBI stank to it. I'm telling you. I think this is a two-pill X-Force. Oh, come on. And it is a... Kelly CB Shop X-Force. Don't know, doesn't have BBI stank to it, and the power wires are cut off the back. So... Ah, oh, cue ball. You give me gas, man. Jesus. Let's uh, let's pull this thing apart and let's see what's going on on the inside. Well, let's cut Toshiba's, I'll say that much. The <clears throat> connectors, I don't know where these came from. These need to get chucked. This has got to go away because of the way it's hooked up. See, this is hooked up post choke. If you add electrolytic capacitance directly to the back of the output transformer, that's, that's very dangerous. That causes harmonics and all kinds of dirt. You want it on the opposite side of this ferrite bead. But I'm just going to completely remove it because it does almost little to no good. Um, we got to put new power wires on it. And it needs a bath. Really bad. Like, really, really, really bad. Um, this is cute. This is cute, but you don't get to do this in a high power amplifier. So we're going to disconnect this BS stereo wire and uh, we're gonna just move this aside we're gonna clean the fan um, we're gonna give the amp a bath um, to get rid of the herpes that are on it because you never know but some of these X forces are like herpes they just keep on giving um, put two new coax connectors on it and um, we'll give it a whack and we'll see if it works pretty sure it will Doesn't even look like the same amp on the inside anymore. All cleaned up. Pulled the power wires out of it, pulled the old coax connectors out of it, pulled the ground lugs out of it. Um, we're going to put in two brand new gold plated Teflon insulated high dollar flicking bought from Max Gain Systems beautiful coax connectors. We're gonna put some new power wire in it and we're gonna test drive it. Also clean the fan up. Now it looks like new, doesn't look like it's uh, been left on for four decades. And uh, let's go see if there's any parts we gotta replace. I doubt it though, I doubt it. I know I know my buddy Cue Ball, he wouldn't send me something that was a complete boogered bag of digs. So, yeah. Let me grab some mounting hardware and let's get these in here and let's get going to turn this into or turn this out to all you guys because I know y'all man I get constantly bombarded dude you got a two pill dude you got a two pill no 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 okay so let's go in here and look at this all new coax connectors on it blah 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 we did a power wire upgrade to it and let's start playing with it so over here we got a thousand watt slug and peak 
10,000 on average, 5 watt slug in reverse back from the bird 10,000 watt dummy load. We're on 15 ish volts, like 15.1. And let's show you drive. <clears throat> let's grab the uh, 955 here and we'll show you drive. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Show you the pass through tune. Hello, one, 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 one. Barely even knows the amplifier is there, which is good. Okay, so let's back this up just a hair. So I'm not quite searching for everything when I'm moving the camera around, making you guys sick. So we are going to turn on the amp and we're going to run it in low mode. So it's 25, 30 watts of drive. Hello. Wow. Makes 450 watts in low. Now let's flip the switch to high. Hello. Wow. Just a hair over 500. Hello. Wow. I call that like 510 maybe. So let's show everybody again. Without touching anything on the workbench. This is the sideband delay, which is not, it's just a relay delay. This amplifier does not do sideband, it's AM only, there's no bias. So we're up and high. Hello. Down and low. Hello. Okay, so let's come back up here. Let's take a look up here. Hello, one, 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 one. That's the input tune on low. Hello, one, 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 input on high. So it runs really well. So 30 watts going in, making close to 500 watts out. That's great. That's all good. So now what you guys are going to want to know is how does it run when you hit it with a striker radio? Because this being more of a competition style box, as like people like used to refer back to in the day, now this is just a standard two pill. We will hit this with a 100 watt radio. It can take more drive, significantly more drive. Now we're going to run this in high. If you run a 100 watt radio into this, you can only run it in high. Okay, so let's turn on the bench striker. Now the bench striker, let's go over here, we'll zoom in, let's show you what it does on drive. Hello, ah, significantly more. We're gonna put like 125, 150 watts into this box. Hello, one, two, once again. Let's go up here at the striker, let's look at the SWR bridge on the front of the striker. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. And we'll look at the bird meter and reflect. Hello, one, two. Doesn't even know anything's there, which is good. Let's move this cable from your guys' point of view. It's right across the freaking front of the bird element. Okay, so let's turn the amp on. Hello. Over 600 watts. We'll turn the dead key all the way down. Hello. About 620 to 640 watts peak power. Hello. And we're making hello. 200 watts average. Hello, one, two, one, two. Now this amp isn't very happy. Hello, one, two. Not very happy when it comes to getting hit with the harder radio. Now, how does that translate to the SWR here? Hello, one, 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 one. Not enough to completely freak it out. But I'd say about 100 watts max. So if you have a standard striker, this will work fine for you. If you have a D-rail or any of the hopped up strikers, this is gonna be a little bit much. So let's take this. Hello. Nope, I'm doing this wrong. I've got a knob for this. Hello. Hello. Turn your RF gain all the way up. Oh man, I'm knocking the camera off and everything. All right. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. Because my striker's got a variable peak knob up on the side of it, 
up here, which I've shown many a time and explained in the videos how this works. We've dialed, dialed the variable peak down to 100 watts, and we'll see if that makes any significant change on the input tune. Oh yes, big time. Hello, hello, audio one 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 one. Here's 600 watts. Let's go look at our input tune now. Hello, one 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 one. Hello. Hello, one 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 one. Hello. It's about a drive level thing. It's absolutely not about a tune. So you're saturating these two transistors to the absolute hilt with one of these strikers. You're putting more in it than what the transistors can do anything with. So, it works, and it works perfectly. We'll spray a little bit of clear on this. Um, we're going to trim these leads up a little bit, and we're going to put the lid back on it. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, audio. BBI, just doing his thing, making stuff that works, work a little bit better. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello, come in. Well, <clears throat> fan didn't slow down, which means no RF's getting into it. Now it's got the means to cool itself. This is an old school Carl built X Force which this was back when everybody really cared about what they were doing. This is 90s, early 2000s technology, which makes me smile. It makes me smile in a big way. Well, gentlemen, I think we're going to ask five for this, uh, just because of the cost of the transistors, the matched non-red dot Toshibas that are in this beautiful girl. I used to have an amp just like this. And then I had a 1x4, then I had a 16, and I had a bunch of boxes that were built by these guys back when I was young, before I could build any of my own stuff. And then I looked inside of one of these one day and went, I can build that. Fast forward 17 years later, and here we are today. So, on that note, hit me up, give me a call. If you watch this after the fact and you're wondering what the Patreon thing's all about, if you've ever watched one of my YouTube videos and I've helped you out, taught you something, you've learned something, or you find it interesting, or you have a desire to get in and get a jump on everybody else, the masses, come join Patreon. Just, just come join Patreon. Come join Patreon with my channel as a supporter and you'll have access to this 48 hours before it hits the regular YouTube channel. And then everybody else has access to it. You get a notification right away as soon as I put a, a video up and you'll be able to have first dibs on it and the numbers on the Patreon channel are relatively low. So you'll have a whole lot more success in being able to get stuff like this when it comes off my workbench for you guys to consume. On top of that, I'm out of here. I wanna say thank you. I think this is the end of this day, and tomorrow is a bunch of big boxes, I think. I think that's what I'm going to spend my day on tomorrow. So on that note, I'm off to go edit and get ready to drop this thing on the Patreon. I appreciate all you gentlemen. Be well. We'll talk soon. Click, click.